My family has always loved nature and the outdoors. And when my youngest son was seven, we went on a family trip to Costa Rica and he was captivated by the birds and came home and was suddenly a birder. And we were going to Central Park to go birding and that's how I found this organization. I learned about spring migration and the carnival of color that comes through every year, but I also learned about the tremendous problems that are faced by those wonderful birds that are flying through the park. Well, watching Karen assume the presidency of this organization was, was really quite remarkable. She just, she took it to a whole nother level. She agreed to be the new president in the beginning of 2020. Well, COVID happened in March and we didn't see that coming, um, but we didn't seem to slow down. We stepped up and became an online operation pretty quickly. And we were able to reach our members and reach them in ways that they could continue to go birding outdoors, but to continue to be part of a birding community that had quickly become virtual. I guess COVID didn't see Karen coming. Karen is an incredibly inspirational and visionary leader. She's able to take complicated problems, make sure every voice is heard, and come out with a solution that works for everybody. But she's able to connect different ideas in a way that creates a really compelling vision for where we're going and how we all work together. We set greater inclusivity as a goal many, many years ago, not just the last four years. And we've been working on that steadily over time. And that is so important for the future of conservation in New York City. Saving a diversity of species depends on a diversity of people. I think the name change you know, was a huge part of pushing um, or, or foregrounding um, equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility. She made it very clear from the beginning that EDIA is part of the whole organization. Karen steered us through the name change for New York City Bird Alliance. She had the vision to think about our future. The name change being, is so important to us because we need to include everybody in the conversation about conservation. And so the Audubon name was a barrier to some people joining. Even though it was risky to change our name, that inclusive aspect has yielded dividends to us already in terms of the people who are finding our organization and feeling that they want to be a part of it. I got a suspicious call from Chris Cooper who said he wanted me to meet someone <laughs> in, uh, in Chelsea and it turned out to be, uh, turned out to be Karen. And uh, we, she had an initiative that she wanted to share which was to try to engage a younger, diverse audience. And creating a community within the organization for young people. And they are really going to be the future of this organization, I think. When I got involved, I did not know that more than a billion birds die in this country every year due to collisions. And it's still astounding to me that the problems that the birds face are so serious and they will require the collective work of us to solve them. And I'm so glad that New York City Bird Alliance is here to take part in finding the solutions. I am so grateful to have been able to work and collaborate with such a phenomenal board of people. It has been an utter pleasure to work with them over the last four years on projects modest and huge. I have learned a lot about birds and I've learned a lot about people. And for me, honestly, the people part of this role has been one of the most satisfying of my life. I uh, get as much of a thrill walking through the park and running into Chris or Elise or Wolfgang or David and Jackie or Mary Jane as I do seeing a Scarlet Tanager. The people who do this work and are involved in the work mean so much to me and it has been really the thrill of a lifetime.